طيب ليتس ستارت ذيس از ان انتراكتيف سيشن اند اتس اول بيست على المحاضرات uh, اللي ادوها للزملاء ليتس ستارت دكتور وات دو ثينك اباوت 65 ييرز اولد جنتمان كومبلينج اوف بين فور ذا لاست 5 ييرز وات ار يو جوين تو دو دي اكس راي اي شوينج هيمي بيلفيس ارترايتس ارترايتس اتس ارترايتس اوكي وسب كوندر سيست على اوكي So it's osteoarthritis. What are you going to do? Uh, are you going to do an osteotomy, uh, an arthritis, it's, uh, or a joint replacement? It's a advanced stage of arthritis. I, I, I decide to do a total hip uh, replacement. Okay. What bearing are you going to use? Um, according to this age, uh, I'm going to use uh, metal and uh, polyethylene uh, um, total hip replacement. Okay, pass it over to your colleague. Yeah. Would you use a cemented or an uncemented? Uh, uncemented. An uncemented. Why? Well, to bone is uh, uh, not good. Uh, osteoporotic patient. Is osteoporotic or not osteoporotic? I think osteoporotic. Osteoporotic. Okay. All right, pass it over. Now, this patient had this operation, and 10 years later, when he's 75, it's painful. What kind of implant was put in? Ragil Dawud, بعد 10 سنين عمل المفصل ده, وبعد 10 سنين بقى it became painful. What prosthesis? Which أي مفصل? نوع المفصل إيه? لا مش عارف. Cement to tooth. Cement to tooth. Pass the microphone. What bearing? What bearing surfaces did the surgeon use? Uh, metal and polyethylene. Okay, pass it over. Now then, why is it painful? Uh, I think it's uh, due to loosening. Loosening, okay. Can you see anything else? Apart from loosening? Anything obvious? And why did it become loose? Could you pass it over to please? Why did it become loose? Cement. Cement, okay. Good point. Now this joint hasn't got cement, but it's got areas of osteolysis. All right. So is cement is to blame or something else? Not blame. Can you see the osteolysis here, here, here? And if you look at the other one, hasn't got cement at all, but still there's osteolysis. Why? Pass it over to Kulik. Why is there osteolysis? Pass it over. Leave your osteolysis, doctor. Instability. Instability. Okay. Instability would cause a dislocation, right? If you, if you look here, can you see the head is not centered in the cup? Why? And it didn't dislocate. I'm sure it was in a better position, in a good position when it was implanted 10 years ago. But you see, the head is not centered. The head is the same cup. The inside diameter of the cup, the same diameter of the head. But why is it eccentric? Smaller size? Yeah, we say the head is the internal diameter of the cup. For polyethylene wear. Okay. And what will the polyethylene uh, do? Where particles and the work particles will lead to osteolysis. So this is an example of a mechanical joint. It's the ball and socket, and you see what happened: rust. These joints do not rust; they produce uh, polyethylene, and the polyethylene wear particles are very small, and it will be engulfed by macrophages, and cytokines will be released, and this will lead to activation of the osteoblasts and osteolysis. So how does wear occur? And why does it occur? If you look at the head, it seems to be very smooth. But in, under the microscope, or the electron microscope, you'll find asperities. And this keeps on scratching the polyethylene and shed the polyethylene particles that you've seen. And now you see after the wear, the uh, cup is larger. And that's, really, that's exactly what happened. If you look in this X-ray again, 
it has worn out this part of the polyethylene and led to particles that led to osteolysis. Okay, so you got that point. So where is the weakest link? The polyethylene. All right, that's why we're thinking of our alternatives. As you know, the coefficient of friction, as my colleague uh, explained to you, is the where is the force multiplied by the coefficient of friction. The metal polyethylene is a very low coefficient of friction, and Charlie called it a low friction of plasty, but it's actually just a low friction torque out of plasty. And it happens because of abrasion, adhesion, or a third body wear or fatigue of the polyethylene. Now, if you look there, there these are asperities. If you look under the microscope and they rub against each other, they will uh, abrade each other and cause abrasive wear. If you look at the ceramic, they've got surface pits, and these surface pits, when they rub against uh, the burning surfaces, again, could produce wear. As far as the force is concerned, and my colleague uh, stressed in his uh, biomechanics lecture, the stresses could be up to five times the body weight. And if it's 80 kilo, and he's coming out, or he's going to the ceiling, it's going to be about 400 kilo of pressure on the ceiling. Going back to lubrication, so where you need a low coefficient of friction, a low force, and lubrication. So how does it happen? A fluid film lubrication that occurs with movement, or a boundary lubrication because of the lubricine particles, uh, molecules in the uh, synovial fluid, and these will cause a boundary, uh, boundary uh, lubrication. Or it could be mixed in the large head and the large head joints, the majority is fluid film lubrication, and the small head joints, like the 28 millimeter head, the majority is boundary lubrication. So this is to explain, can you see the lubricine or the lining the asperities of the surface? And these lead to boundary lubrication, even although there is contact, but with fluid, Lubrication. There is a fluid that separates the two surfaces. وهو ده اللي موجود في زيت العربية. زيت العربية بيكون في زيت هيخش ما بين ال surfaces عشان يعمل lubrication ويسبريت ال two metal surfaces. وبيكون في كمان مواد إضافية بتترسب على المتل عشان أول ما تدور العربية it needs boundary lubrication. فالاحتكاك هيكون أولي لغاية ما ال ترمب الزيت تضخ الزيت between the surfaces and lead to fluid film lubrication. So it's all mechanics and biomechanics. These are the uh, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene particles that lead to the uh, osteolysis. Now, how we can improve then the ultra high molecular weight polyethylene? Doctor, what do you think of this picture on the right? This is a cut section of a cup that was left on the shelf for a long time ago. And what happened? Oxidation. And oxidation leads to accelerated wear. And these things were not discovered when um, the low friction aphroplasty evolved at first. They were discovered later on. So how are we going to improve on that? Will oxygen, will ashaa add it ila oxidation? So how can we avoid that? Deoxidation. Deoxidation? Oxidation, it's oxygen. هو ألحاها قبل ما يحصل أكسيزيشن. حسن تخزين. التخزين. شلف. شلف. طب وقبل التخزين نقدر نعمل حاجة؟ أنيلينج. قبل الأنيلينج. مش نسترايز إن إنرت جاز أو إن فاكيوم. وبعدين التطوير اللي عليها هو الكروس لينكينج. So how does cross linking happen؟ تحصل إزاي؟ راديشن وبعدين طب ما راديشن هيحصل فري راديكلز. What do you do after radiation? Do you give a high dose of radiation? So what do you do afterwards? Right. You either anneal it or melt it. يا إما تسخنه لدرجة أقل من درجة الانصهار أو تعمل له melting يعني تعمل له انصهار وترجع تجمده تاني. And the most up to date is to use vitamin E. And this leads to improved wear rates and long term longevity. And it allows you to lose a large head because if you lose a large head in ultra high molecular polyethylene, what's going to happen? Conventional polyethylene. 
هيزيد الفوليومتريك وير وهيزيد اللينير وير but with the cross link polyethylene does that not happen but what's the disadvantage there is decreased fatigue strength and fracture toughness so هي حاجة قصاد حاجة there is a risk and a benefit but the benefit here in the cross link polyethylene outweighs the risk now then doctor what's the operation that was done resurfacing okay and what's the interface the bearing surface metalometer okay what happened there ايوه طول خطاب حصل ايه فين حصل فراكشر فين يعني المفصل الحديد اتكسر يعني ما لازم تكون دقيق شوي الحديد اتكسر يابا انا عارف Osteolysis, okay. Does osteolysis happen with metal or metal? Is it common? But why did it break? Small size of the small size of the stem. Small size of the stem. Not the stem, but you're getting closer. Small size of small size the of neck. the neck. Yeah. So in females, it's contraindicated, right? They don't use it now. Not only because they were have a child but because they've got smaller necks and smaller necks that be disposed to a fracture what else be disposed to a fracture if you put if you notch the neck during insertion it will be disposed to a fracture so it is very sensitive to the the technique is very sensitive okay so if you do one you have to do try it so uh, what are the advantages of metal or metal ايه ايه المزايا؟ مكان البوليثيلين شغال وفي كروس لينك بوليثيلين وات ادفانتج داز ذا ميتال اوف ميتال اوفر؟ يا سمول نمبر اوف بارتس سمول بارتيكلز اند ليس فوليومتريك وير اند اتس ليس لايكلي تو بروديوس اوستيولوس يو يوزينج ا لارج هيد ذات ويل انكارج فلويد فيلم لوبريكيشن There is a good range of motion and they are more stable because they are large heads. And moreover, if you're doing resurfacing, it preserves bone. So if you come to a revision later on, the bone on the femoral side will be preserved. Dr. Khattab, what's wrong? What's the problem with metal on metal that was discovered later on? Many of the lymphocytic reaction that happens, there's something called Alval. And there's a وبيبقى فيه اميون رياكشن برضه بيتكون جرانيولوما بعد فتره وبرضه بيبقى فيه توكسيسيتي وبيبقى فيه الايونز ممكن تبقى ماشيه في البلاد وبتعمل القصه ديت يعني. اوكي سو از ماي كوليج دكتور محمد ابو سعود ديسكرايبد وين ات ستارتس اوف اتس جوت لوتس اوف اسبيريتيز وذا بيحصل عمليه بيلين الموتور بتاع العربيه برضه المفصل بيتلين اند ديورنج ذا فيرست يير ذيز اسبيريتيز روب انتو ايتش اذر and remove each other and it becomes smoother. So as this happened, as the trying again, when we started laying, we saw ions a lot, or molecules a lot, from cobalt and chrome, and that will be in the blood, but after that, it will be in the blood. The cobalt and chrome, and if somebody's got renal failure, he cannot excrete that, and it could be toxic to him. And if a female in the wear-bearing age, uh, child-bearing age, she will, it's teratogenic. If you look at this, that's when it starts running in. شايفين the levels بتاعت الكوبات والكروم عالية قوي وبعدين بعد أول سنة بيبتدي تقل the levels. لو حصل إنك حللت the levels ولقيتها بتعلى, there is something wrong happening. So if you look at that, can you see any fractures? All right. Why is it painful? Doctor Mina, Mina Wahib. Why is it painful, Mina? Can you see anything wrong in the X-ray? Fee caster is the halal labliya.
The soft tissue reaction, okay, that's a good point. This one is painful as well. There's nothing wrong. It is not, uh, there's no breaks. And if you look here, if you do an MRI, which is a special MRI called the MARS, which is the metal artifact reduction sequence, or you do an ultrasound, you will find a large cavity of an alveol or an aseptic lymphocyte dominate, dominated vasculitis associated lesion. And you can see clearly these are the sediments of the metal. I feel it, the metal debris. وشايفين الفلويد سيست الكبيره دي ده بينتج عن الميتال ديبريز ات كوز سيل دامج في السايتوكاينز اند تايب 4 هايبر سنسيتيفيتي رياكشن اند ليد تو وات نون تو ذا سود تيومر فورميشن سو ذا كونسيرنز اباوت ذس ميتال اند ميتال اند ذا ريسيرفسينج از ذا فراكشرز في ميل اند ذا شايل بيرنج ايج رينال فيلير سمولر نكست ذات كود بي ديسبوز تو فراكشر اند ذا فورميشن اوف سود تيومر Therefore, the majority of the implants has been withdrawn from the market. Samila, yes, sir. Squeaking. Why is it squeaking? A friction of what? That's a point. So, what kind of? Uh, Prothesis did this patient have? Ceramic on ceramic. So the ceramic on ceramic is famous of squeaking. And this is very noisy and very distressing for the patient, especially when she's going upstairs. Now, this is uh, ceramic on ceramic. And what happened? A fracture. So you can see the problems evolving, squeaking, fractures. Now then, Doctor, what is the burning surface on the left side? Ah, on the left side. What is the burning surface here? Metal on polyethylene. And what is it on the other side? The first one, we're talking about bearing. You said here, ceramic and polythene. And on this side? Ceramic and ceramic. But the first thing, in the past, you find the notes of the eye. You find the notes. The notes. لو بصيت هنا حضرتك هتلاقي انك شايف الخروم اللي هي في الكب فغالبا ده مش سيراميك لاينر ده غالبا بوليثيلين لاينر وشايف الهيد موس بروبلي يس اوكي لا تمام تمام لو شايف هنا ايه ده نص نص كوره مكسوره ممكن تكون متل ممكن تكون متل وتشق كده نصين صعب جدا طيب فهي سيراميك طيب Why does ceramic break? Leave it, Kisser. The bill is as low as a way at Menaka, the little Kisser. Brittle. Okay. So, and why does it. Any other reasons why does the ceramic break? Shafin, the explantation, how are the taper? It cuts out the head, Kaza Hitta. وعور البوليثيلين. Um, not exactly not sensitivity, but micro cracks do form in the uh, ceramic in the first and second and third generations, and they propagate. And as the crack propagates, it leads to a fracture. So it's brittle, there is propagation of cracks, and trauma could cause a fracture. And that's why, if you're going to use, use the new fourth generation, the Biolox Delta which is pinkish in color, as my colleague uh, explained to you. And the risk of fractures with these fourth generation implants is very low. So how can we diagnose a fracture? How can we diagnose a fracture of a ceramic? By x-ray, okay, you can't see it. Complaint, pain, squeaking, CT, and synovial fluid analysis. So if you have a fracture, when and how are you going to revise it? As soon as possible. And what are you going to do? 
and ceramic on ceramic. Everybody agrees? If you have a fracture and you revise it into a polyethylene on a metal, what happens is that the debris of the ceramic, of the broken ceramic, will act like a um, third body, and this will produce wear. Not only this, but it will scratch the head and will become more rough and will lead to accelerated wear. So really the option that you have is ceramic on ceramic. But if you revise a ceramic prothesis and the taper is intact, you have to use a metal sleeve if the stem is stable. But if the, if the taper is damaged, you have to remove the stem and revise the stem. And why is that? Ah, the damaged taper could damage the ceramic and lead to fracture. Yeah, and you don't want that. So what are the advantages of ceramic ceramic? It's hard on hard bearing, with low surface roughness, low coefficient of friction, small inert wear particles, least volumetric wear, it is wettable and hydrophilic and that encourages fluid film lubrication and it has a low scratch profile. If you scratch a metal, you can see these asperities as a result of a scratch of a metal and this will lead to more polyethylene wear. But if you scratch a ceramic by accident, it will lead to a V-shaped pit and that will lead to less wear. Now about wettability, if you look at this uh, video, you can see this water on metal and it subsides an angle of 86. The less the angle, the more wettable. And if you see in the ceramic here, this angle is 45. So the concerns, we many advantages, but there are concerns about the fracture, the squeaking. We don't, you can't use lip inserts. There is limited uh, modularity of head size and lens. It needs accurate positioning, and moreover, it is expensive. Also, it could uh, suffer from stripe wear. So now then, we come to the end. What are the options? There are many. Metal and polyethylene, ceramic and polyethylene, metal or ceramic and highly cross-linked polyethylene, metal and metal, and ceramic and ceramic. Can you, feel the word, can you see the word that's happening? Can you see the metal and polyethylene produces the largest volumetric wear, and the ceramic and ceramic and the metal on metal produce the least volumetric wear. So what are we going to choose our next step? And how are we going to make a decision? It's difficult. It has to be a sensible choice. It's not an absolute choice. Based on the evidence in the research, based on the benefit-risk ratio, based on the price, and based on the patient age, the activity, the comorbidities, and the lifespan. So in general, young active patients below the age of 60, you would rather put, uh, use a ceramic on ceramic and use a large head, a 32 or 36 millimeter head. Another option, you can use ceramic and cross-link polyethylene. Resurfacing is only, has got a limited indication, which is number one in males, large head size between 56 and 64. You don't use it on small head sizes. And the McMinn's hip, which is the Birmingham hip. Other hips has been withdrawn from the market. And it needs an expert to put it in. So if you don't have the expertise, you better off not do it, do a conventional hip replacement. Now we come for patients between the age of 65 to 75, possibly a sensible option, is ceramic and cross-link polyethylene. Patients between 60 and 65, if they are active, you could consider ceramic or ceramic or ceramic and cross-link polyethylene. Above the age of 75, you would consider a cobalt chrome head on cross-link polyethylene. But again, the choice is depends on many factors, right? If the patient has got ligamentous laxity and increased range of motion preoperatively, anatomical deformities, you should use the ceramic on ceramic with care. So in summary, the bearing surfaces, hard on soft, like metal on polyethylene or cross-link polyethylene or ceramic and polyethylene. Hard on hard, metal and metal, major concerns, it's been withdrawn for the market, limited indications, ceramic on ceramic gives you better uh, wear rates and longevity in comparison to other bearing services. Thank you very much.